Herein lies the tragedy of the age, not that men are poor, all men know something of poverty, not that men are wicked, who is good, not that men are ignorant, what is truth. Nay, but that men know so little of men. My morals were sound, even a bit puritanic, but when a hide-bound old deacon invade against dancing I rebelled. By the time of graduation I was still a believer in orthodox religion, but had strong questions which were encouraged at Harvard. One never feels his twoness, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body, whose strength alone keeps it from being what torn What do asunder. we call love, hate, charity, revenge, humanity? Forgiveness? Different results of the master impulse. Unless your government is respectable, foreigners will invade your rights, and to maintain tranquility, it must be respectable, even to observe neutrality, you must have a strong government. The badlands grade all the way from those that are almost rolling in character to those that are so fent. When I was young, I was too slow. I thought I must learn to run fast by practicing to run fast, so I ran 100 meters fast 20 times. Then I came back, slow, slow, slow. People said, Emil, you are crazy. You are training like a sprinter. One day the factory sports coach, who was very strict, pointed at four boys, including me, and ordered us to run in a race. I protested that I was weak and not fit to run, but the coach sent me for a physical examination and the doctor said that No, you can't deny women their basic rights and pretend it's about your religious freedom. If you don't like birth control, don't use it. Religious freedom doesn't mean you can force others to live by your own beliefs. We, the people, recognize that we have responsibilities as well as rights that our destinies are bound together, that a freedom which only asks what's in it for me, a freedom without a commitment to others, a freedom without love or charity or duty. If you're walking down the right path and you're willing to keep walking, eventually you'll make progress. The future rewards those who press on. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I don't have time to complain. I'm going to press on. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. I have always believed that hope is that stubborn thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us so long as we have the courage to keep preaching to keep working. I have said that control of arms is a mission that we undertake particularly for our children and our grandchildren and that they have no lobby in Washington. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness, and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear. But let us never fear to negotiate. United there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided there is little we can do, for we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split us under. Around the prairie dog towns it is always well to keep a lookout for the smaller carnivora, especially coyotes and badgers, and for the larger kinds of hawks. Rattlesnakes are quite plenty living in the deserted holes. I would suggest the taxation of all property equally, whether church or corporation, exempting only the last resting place of the dead and possibly, with proper restrictions, church edifices. Declare church and state forever separate and distinct, but each free within their proper spheres, and that all church property shall bear its own proportion of taxation. The sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or musty records. They are written, as with a sunbeam, in the whole volume of human nature, by the hand of the divinity itself, and can never be erased. Let us recollect that peace or war will not always be left to our option, 
that however moderate or unambitious we may be, the history of the American Negro is the history of this strife, this longing to attain self-conscious manhood, to merge his double self into a better and truer self. In this merging he wishes neither of the older selves to be lost. The theology of the average colored church is basing itself far too much upon hell and damnation, upon an attempt to scare people into being decent and threatening them with the terrors of death and punishment.